our physical sciences and we're going to have a look at investigate pendulum swings and in particular when pendulum swings are painting okay so we're going to use a pendulum swing to create a painting such as the one that you can see on the screen in front of us so we just need to understand a little bit about the scientific background the kinetic and the potential energy that is behind the pendulum swing okay so we will have a look at um, force and motion and the laws um, of gravity as well and um, we will understand that some of the ideas behind that um, will help that with a moving object so we're looking at visually seeing the effect of gravity on a moving object we're also going to investigate the motion of a simple pendulum and to determine how the motion of the pendulum is related in in the length so the string hanging the pendulum is important and how that sits uh, just above the canvas or the paper that's really important in determining that as well and thirdly we're going to look at creating a pattern using a spherical pendulum and predict how variables will change the look of that painting So we're going to look at pendulum theory and it was discovered in 1602 by Galileo and um, it describes the regular swinging motion of a pendulum by the action of gravity and the acquired momentum and uh, you can have a look there we're looking at the length of the string the equilibrium as it falls down into the middle and does not move and the arc of that swing and the arc of the swing is probably the most important part of our pendulum swing today that we need to understand what's going on there so a simple pendulum consists of mass so hanging at the end of a string of length and the period of a pendulum or the oscillatory motion is the time required to complete one cycle so that that is the time of going backwards and forwards um, just once and when we create those patterns we can actually count and measure the actual how many times you'll see a symmetry coming through in those um, paintings So a pendulum is a fixed object hung from a point so that it can swing freely backward and forth due to the force of gravity. So when we are discussing the concept with children, a great example is to use a swing and just a general um, childhood swing uh, to get that backwards and forwards motion. The swing moves back, backwards and forwards and it's demonstrating the physics of a pendulum. The swing is um, is moving backward and forth due to the force of gravity on that. So we also have um, kinetic and potential energy here as well that we are investigating. So the kinetic energy is that actual moving of the pendulum of the swing backwards and forwards. So it is looking at that arc that it is moving in. The potential energy is that uh, built up energy, the potential for it to move. So you can almost say that the paint inside the cup or the bottle is almost that potential energy. It's waiting to come out. It's waiting to move. So it has that potential for that movement to happen. So we do need a lot of preparation here. And as you can see in my setup, um, here at um, home in my um, in my foyer you can see that I've actually you need a lot of um, uh, protection on the floor in a sense too because it can get very messy uh, and generally you might want to go a little bit bigger than what I've done you also need the frame the a-frame sitting there and we'll go up and zoom in on a little bit closer on the top of the a-frame so you can see where that hook is okay so you can see where the pendulum is in the setup you uh, you'll need a large piece of paper so you can see there I've got some um, cartridge paper so it's, it's half the size of easel paper there and I've just stuck it together on the back so that I can see um, the pendulum moving forward now this is only my test paper so I'm testing the parameters of this pendulum swing because I don't want it to go any further outside of those legs because my paper does not fit outside of those legs so I'm working within those constraints and that is the criteria that I have set um, for this task as well because it sits on the frame that has already been made that sets up um, you know that pendulum swing so let's keep going forward and um, have a look at a close-up of the pendulum swing 
all right here so you can actually see how the pendulum swing is um, set and what I've done is um, we've welded um, four pieces of the um, the metal bar together it's a hollow bar and that hollow bar fitted nicely with the sticks of wood that we already had at home and you can see I've got a hook coming through in the middle there okay so I've made that tripod you can make a tripod in any way that you like you can string some string and a hook across two chairs the backs of two chairs with paper underneath um, but this is just so that it's a bit more movable for me and a bit more transportable in uh, in what I'm doing I needed to transport from one site to another and multiple setups with this as well so you can see that because I can pull those um, pieces of wood apart, I've actually had to destabilize it by my, using some masking tape while I'm using that string, otherwise they basically kick out from you and it, the whole thing falls apart as well. So you just need to stabilize it uh, while you're moving it. There's not a great deal of mass, not a great deal of weight on this as well, so it doesn't need to be that heavy. Okay, so with your bottle, so you could see in the other picture that it was a, um, a drink bottle, plastic uh, Coke bottle there. It could be any soft drink, drink bottle that you like. A small one is adequate enough. You don't need a large two litre bottle. But you can see that the lid is important. And that size of that hole that has been drilled into that lid is about three mil. It's a three to five mil drill bit. So you don't need a large hole. The larger the hole, the more paint that will come out and end up just pooling into um, a pool of paint. And you won't actually have the nice fine lines that you get with the pendulum, okay? And it's really important that you get the uh, viscosity of the paint um, and the runniness of that paint really to the point where it's just flowing out nicely. You don't want it to flow too fast. You don't want it too runny. It'll just pull. If it, is too thick and it doesn't come out it comes out in blobs and you get blobs all over your paper uh, that then pull rather than just the nice straight lines that you've seen um, previous in the what that demonstration there so just be very careful there's a lot of testing that you'll need to do uh, a lot of dry runs that you'll need to do maybe use water and see how it goes through first before you waste uh, any paint and put any paint in there uh, the global flow medium paints are beautiful in here and you don't need to add anything to it but if you're just using normal um, school acrylic either it might be thick or it might be thin and you need to adjust it so you need to work out the um, the, the viscosity of your paint first before you can actually do this, this is the main point it needs to flow nicely before you can move on uh, to the next step Okay, so you have seen there that I have got at the top of the bottle, I've just used a hole punch and I've got three evenly spaced around the bottle. I've just reinforced those holes with some tape and then I've tied some garden string on the top and um, the length of the pendulum. So from how high it sits up off the paper to the, to the point of where it's hanging on that hook that you saw is extremely important as well. So if you fiddle with those and use those as a test or your variables, you will get different patterns happening and different things happening that students can observe with this. Um, as well. So it's a good for um, a, a t fair test. If you're going to look at a scientific point of this um, activity, you'll look at um, how students are working scientifically and what is a fair test for them. And you can see it doesn't hang very far from the paper um, and it's down very close. So I've worked out through trial and error that this is just the right height that I wanted for that hole and for the paint to flow through. It's always good for you to have a bit of tape over the top of the hole, but once it gets wet, it does get messy and um, you won't be able to put more masking tape back on, it just won't stick. So a plate, having a plate underneath is really great so you can catch those drips and you can bring it up a little bit higher so you can start working with that and put your finger under the hole. Or as you can see in one of the pictures, uh, the videos that you're going to see, you can actually see me, I actually grab a hold of the bottle and put my finger underneath to stop any more paint running through I then put the um, paper plate underneath and then sit it in a cup so it can drip into the cup and then you can pour what's in the cup either back into the bottle to have another go or you can store that paint in a glass jar a recycled glass jar for next time you're going to do this and you will know that that's the right um, 
running this um, of that paint. Just be careful weather can also help with that too or impede that if it's really hot, stinky, 40 degree day, you're gonna find the paint's gonna be runny. So just be careful of temperature with your paints as well um, and depending on what paints you use. Alright, so we're ready to go there and ready to do a test run and this is our first test run. So you can see I've got blobs coming through in some of those. Um, I added very little water to this paint because it was a runny paint already and you can see that on my scrap paper there. But you can see where the lines of the paint start to pull um, as they start to go over that pattern itself and they're starting to become runny. So this time round, I was actually really happy with what I'd done. First go, I got the, um, the flow of the paint happening with the pink paint. I then transferred it and just used white paint knowing I had already pre-primed a, a black canvas that I wanted to do this paint on for displays and I can bring it into my classroom and show my students quite easily this is what we're going to do. It's more durable and it just lasts that little bit longer for the next time you're going to be doing this or the next year that you're going to be doing this. Teaching this multiple times to multiple year levels. If you're in a STEM situation or a science specialist, that's fantastic. And in my case, I'm actually doing this as a visual arts specialist, but I'm bringing science into the art room as well. So I'm using the STEM ideas here for science technology engineering in the design of the pendulum and also art visual art so it's a steam activity by including the visual art in that as well okay and this was my second run I took me a while to get this paint to go um, and to be the right um, runniness so I did a couple of runs on some spare paper first before I then put, quickly put the canvas underneath and you'll see that as it starts to happen how we stop and start um, a pendulum as well and we can also interrupt the pendulum and we can also um, interrupt that flow and the design of where that pendulum goes we have that control over that and you'll see me do that in in these videos here I stop and start it I did have a helper with me as you will probably notice um, there's a few men's hands in there um, my husband was helping me just with the stop and start just so that we could get this in and get it done um, a little bit easier and a little bit quicker but uh, you can do this by yourself or you can have a couple of helpers student helpers um, there with you helping you but be prepared for the messiness so you can see the start wasn't really um, neat and um, it was a little bit messy from the start there. As you get to do these a little bit more, you get to know where your stops and starts are. This didn't take over the whole of the canvas, um, which you can see when I do it, I go to the edges of the canvas um, and I'm just changing that direction there. And you can see there's a little bit of messiness when you change that direction. Everything else when you let that pendulum swing, um, has that sy symmetry to it so it's quite symmetrical and if you measured those lengths on either side you would see that they would actually be mathematically correct um, as well there okay